X-linked traits were so difficult for me to understand until I learned it this way. To understand X-linked or sex-linked traits, we have to understand a few things. Number one, you, your body, are made of 30 trillion cells. And they look something like this, right? Whatever these cells are made of become your traits because you are quite literally made of these cells. Now the cells need some instructions on how to build themselves, and that comes in the form of DNA. Now I want you to think of DNA as basically the recipe book for your cells. So if all of your cells have these instructions, they know how to build themselves. But recipe books are very, very organized. In fact, they're usually organized into chapters, right? Maybe a chapter for appetizers, a chapter for desserts, and so forth and so on. Well, your DNA is also organized into chapter books, which are chromosomes. So think of these as the chapters of the recipe book. And you have 23 pairs of chapters. Now you know that you received your DNA from your parents, right? So what's interesting is from your dad, you received one of all of these chromosomes. So I'm going to draw that now. I'm going to skip the 23rd here for a second. But like I said, you didn't just receive it from your dad, you also received it from your mom, right? So from your mom, you'll also receive one of every chromosome, basically 1 through 23 as well. So if you were to take all of these chromosome pairs and put them into your DNA, that would form all of the genetic material your cells need, right? This is also why you get certain traits from dad and you get certain traits from mom because you have kind of a mixture of all of their chromosomes in your body. So if you've got basically a chapter from dad, a chapter from mom for each of the chromosomes, think about it. Within the chapters, you will have little recipes themselves, right? And I want you to think of the recipes as genes. And this is where the magic happens because the recipes are actually going to code for those specific traits. Now, if genes are recipes within chapters, well, then you can find specific genes on different chromosomes, just like you can find different recipes on different chapters of the recipe book, right? So for example, certain genes for something on say chromosome six here could be found maybe right there and mom's corresponding gene, her recipe for it will be right there. That's why you usually get one variation of a gene from each parent, right? So you may have seen that designated as say like big A, little A, or big A, big A, or little A, little A for different traits, different alleles or variations of the trait themselves. Because maybe dad says has a big A on his and a little A on mom's, that would make you big A, little A. If you want more information about this, please watch this overview video for genetics, really helpful before you learn other traits. But here's where X-linked traits come in. On that 23rd chromosome pair, you have two different options. Number one, you could have an option of having from dad an X chromosome, which will be up here pretty big. So this is an X chromosome, so you could get an X from dad. And from mom, you could also get an X chromosome. And in that case, your genotype would be XX. Now that is a genetic female. So if you're female, you have two X chromosomes because you got one from dad and one from mom, but you know you can also be a genetic male. And in that case, dad instead would have given you a very small chromosome, which is actually the Y chromosome, but mom always gives an X chromosome. So in this case, you would be that genetic male. So here's where X-linked traits come in. If you are a male, how many X chromosomes do you have? Just one. If you are a female, how many X chromosomes do you have? Two. Okay, and this is where it gets interesting. So check this out. X-linked traits are specific genes that are found on the X chromosome. One such gene actually deals with colorblindness. So in this manner, colorblindness is actually what's called a recessive allele for the colorblind gene, okay? So if you have, we'll say, a little r, that means you have the colorblindness allele. Does that make sense? It's recessive, right? So anytime you have a recessive, you usually have a dominant correlated with it. So we're going to say that big R is actually not colorblind. So if you get a big R, you will not be colorblind. But if you get a little R, you could potentially be colorblind. Now, keep in mind, this is a gene found on the X chromosome itself. So the way to designate that when we're talking about the alleles or the variations of specific genes, we have to write it in this manner either X big R or X little r. Okay, and that's just designating, hey, on the X chromosome, there's that dominant colorblindness allele, or here on the X chromosome, there's the recessive colorblindness allele. So just as an example, if I were to look at the female, say this is you, right? You will have two opportunities. So maybe on the female, here's the gene for the colorblindness. Let's say you have an X big R and you have an X little r. Great. Now, let's say on the male, how many opportunities do you get? We only get one. So let's say in this example, you have an X with a big R. So you have a male who is not colorblind because he doesn't have that colorblind allele. So let's actually make a genetic cross for this female who has X big R, X little R, with the male X big R, all right? So let's draw it up here. So male will be on top here. 
But remember, with a male here, we're not going to have another x. We're actually going to have that y, right? So I'm going to write x big R and then y with nothing after it because that gene is not found on the y chromosome. It doesn't exist on that guy. It only exists on the x. Whereas on the female, we'll have the x big R and the x little r. Now you are professional Punnett square makers, so let's go ahead and do this cross. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, let's look first at the left side column. In this case, both of these will be genetic females because they have two X's, right? So two X's means female. So we've got a female who is homozygous dominant, two dominant alleles for not being colorblind. That's awesome. One of the females is actually going to be a carrier. So she has a dominant allele for not colorblind and then a recessive allele for colorblind. So she will actually not have colorblindness, right? Because she's got the dominant to mask it. So let's write out those for the female. But now we also have two 25% that are actually going to be male because we have X, Y. So in this case, we've got one male who will not be colorblind because he has the dominant. But then you see the last guy right here. And this guy has one X chromosome with the colorblindness allele, but then the Y. So actually this is going to be a genetic male who is colorblind. So this is where we get to a key point. Most of the time, X-linked traits are more common for males because males only have one opportunity for that X chromosome. So if you get the recessive allele for colorblindness, you will have that trait, okay? Now let's do one more cross just to be safe. Let's say now we have a colorblind dad. We have X little R, Y, so he's a colorblind male, and we're actually going to have a carrier, so a female who is not colorblind, but she's carrying that recessive allele. And let's see what happens here. Well, in this cross, we've got a heterozygous female who will not be colorblind, right? We'll also have a male who is not colorblind as well. But in this cross, this is where it gets interesting. In this cross, now we have a female who is homozygous recessive. This is incredibly uncommon, but in this case, we've got a female who's colorblind because she's got two recessive colorblind alleles on her X chromosome. So she will actually be colorblind. And lastly, as you guessed it, we've got a male who has that colorblindness allele as well. So although uncommon, it's not impossible for a female to get two of those recessive colorblindness traits to actually become colorblind, but it's very rare. This is X-Link Traits. Check out this playlist for a little more about some Punnett squares and genetics.